Education Network presents Grand Battle of the Books. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 11th annual Battle of the Books. It's the elementary school division. I'm Rick Blackwell from the Education Network, and we're coming to you from the Education Network studios. We got two great teams in the elementary school division. We have Whispering Pines Elementary School and Binks Forest Elementary School. So we welcome both of the teams. How are you guys doing? You guys all ready today? Yes. yes. All right, you guys know that we are going for the Kavanaugh Cup, and here it is. It's this big trophy, and we're naming it in memory of Kim Kavanaugh, a longtime district employee. We miss Kim. Tragically, he passed away in April, but we're thinking about him by naming the trophy the Kavanaugh Cup. These two schools and these eight individuals have read thousands of pages to get ready for this event. There are 15 books on the list. We're gonna quiz them about all 15 of those books. In some cases, these kids have not only read all 15 books, they've read it one, two, three, five times. We have one individual, we're gonna meet her in just a little bit, who's read every single one of those 15 books five times. That is so impressive. Well, they're all impressive, and we wanna meet the teams right now and the individual players. And first from Whispering Pines Elementary School, Chris, start us off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Chris, and I'm in fifth grade, and I play soccer. Cool. My name is Jay, and one, two of my favorite things to do are play baseball and read. Hi, my name is Jillian Bender, and I love to act, and I, I could paint the starry night. Thanks, Bingo. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm in fourth grade, and I like to fish. Awesome. Well, it's really great meeting the team over there from Whispering Pines. All right, Binks Forest, we got Jacob over here to start us off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a fifth grader, and I like to read and play soccer. Um, I'm, my name is Ryan, I'm also a fifth grader, and I also like to read and play soccer. It's a thing. <laughs> my name is Ryan, <clears throat> and I'm a fifth grader also. I love to play on my Xbox and play football. Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm, I enjoy that we are here. I, li I like to play the piano as much as I love to read, and uh, go Binks. All right, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, Anthony, I appreciate that. Well, you know what, what makes this event possible obviously is the great work by these students, but also the school district to put on this event. Ryan, thank you so much. Let's get this started. Let the competition begin. First question goes to Whispering Pines Elementary School. In which book did the character put thinking goggles on her head instead of over her eyes? Dragons and Marshmallows by Asia Astra. That is correct. Question two goes to Binks Forest Elementary School. In which book does a character regret making a rule instead of accommodations? A True Home by Callie George. That is incorrect. Question three, Whispering Pines Elementary. In what book does the main character work for a detective agency? Um, Double Cross by Jackson Pierce. That is incorrect. Question four, Binks Force. In which book does a character say, some people have the desire to practice and some people just have talent? I'm lucky, I have both. Uh, Lights, Camera, Cook by Therese Miracle Harper. That is correct. Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book does a character say, quote, stories belong to the teller, at least half of them do. The other part belongs to the listeners. Lock in one ear by Karen Warnwood. That is correct. Question six goes to Binks Forest Elementary. In which book does a character wait for an elevator because he, she doesn't get to ride one that often? The Double Cross and Other Skills I Learned as a Super Spy by Jackson Pierce. That is incorrect. Question seven goes to Whispering Pines. In which book does a character say that grilled cheese on whole wheat was delicious? Double Cross by Jackson Pierce. That's correct. Question eight, Binks Forest Elementary. In which book did the aunt want her niece to sing a Mariah Carey song with her at church? The Sweetest Sound by Sherry Winston. That is correct. Whispering Pines, question nine. In which book did a character say, quote, 
I laid there in the dark and pictured a clothesline full of somebody else's troubles. I knew for sure there were a lot of them. I'd rather pluck off that line than mine. I love you, Michael Collins, by Laura Logstead. That is incorrect. Binks Forest Elementary, question 10. In which book does a character declare, I like the hearts, they're the tastiest? A True Home by Callie George. That is correct. Question 11, Whispering Pines. In which book did the character say, doesn't anybody stay with the ship anymore? Um, I Love You, Michael Collins by Laura Logstead. That is correct. Binks Forest, question 12. In which book does a character make this observation about another character? That he is, quote, like a grown-up in a kid body. He doesn't act like a kid or even look like one. He wears shirts like my dad. Lights, Camera, Cook by Therese Miracle Harper. That is correct. Question 13 goes to Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book is iron poisonous to a group of characters and their goddess? Podkin One Year by Karen Longstead. Long that is correct. Question 14 goes to Binks Forest Elementary. In which book does a character defend the queen and protect the castle? Spirit Week Showdown by Crystal Allen. That is correct. Question 15 goes to Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book do we find a character who sleeps with a stuffed hedgehog? Um, oh, um, Double Cross by Jackson Pierce. That's correct. Question 16 goes to Binks Forest Elementary. In which book do the father want his want in which book do the father want his sons to go to Penn State? The Sweetest Sound by Sherry Winston. That is correct. Question 17 goes to Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book does a character say, quote, I knew what it felt like to be astray, not having a home where somebody wanted you, and he was a fighter like me. Um, Pablo, Ugly Ken and Pablo by Tom Knight. That is incorrect. Question 18, Binks Forest. In which book does a character promise to start seeing the good in things, like her sister and best friend? I love you, Michael. Wish by Barbara O'Connor. That is correct. Question 19 goes to Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book was there a sick dragon? Dragons and Marshmallows by Asia Astro. Okay. Question 20 goes to Binks Force Elementary. In which book did astronauts die in Apollo 13? I Love You, Michael Collins by Lauren Bratz Logstead. That is correct. Question 21 goes to Whispering Pines. In which book does one of the main characters find his dad living in the forest? Lemons by Melissa Savage. That is correct. Question 22, Binks Forest. In which book is a character being interviewed for a book about a harrowing experience? Overboard. Overboard by Terry Lynn Johnson. Correct. Question 23, Whispering Pines. In which book is a character afraid of bully bacteria? Spirit Week Showdown by Crystal Allen. That is correct. Question 24. It goes to Binks Forest. In what book do they compare what happened to them to Jurassic Park? The Ark Plan by Laura Martin. That is correct. Question 25. It goes to Whispering Pines. In which book is a character's prized possession a fancy display case of teeth? Um, the Great Trias War by Lisa Graff. That is correct. Question 26 goes to Bink Forest Elementary. In which book does a character declare, I almost lost my lasagna? Ugly Cat and Pablo by Isabel Quintero. That is correct. 
Question 27 goes to Whispering Pines. In which book did one character advise another to invoke a fruit when angry? Lemons. Lemons by Melissa Savage. Say that, say that one more time. Lemons by Melissa Savage. That is incorrect. We now go to question 28. In which book do we learn that aardvarks are fast diggers? Spirit Week Showdown by Crystal Allen. That is correct. Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book is a character's walls covered in neon pink and purple posters depicting animals and cheerleaders? Double Cross by Jackson Pierce. That is correct. Binks Forest Elementary. In which book did the main character name her dog after a constellation? The Sweetest Sound by Sherry Winston. That is correct. Question 31 goes to Whispering Pines. In which book does a character state, look at me, look at this face. This is the face of a heartbreaker. Um, Spear Week Showdown by Crystal Allen? That is incorrect. Question 32 goes to Binks Forest. In which book does the nickname Butterbean eventually make the main character feel special? Wish by Barbara O'Connor. That is correct. Question 33 goes to Whispering Pines. In which book did one of the characters hide a photo in her office? Um, Double Cross by no, Jack. No, no. Um, Dragons and Marshmallows by Asia Astro. That is correct. Binks Forest, question 34. In which book did a character decide that she didn't want to run and hide anymore because, quote, that's what she had done all her life? The Ark Plan by Laura Martin. That is incorrect. Question 35 goes to Whispering Pines. In which book was the phrase, holy moly, one of the characters' favorite things to say? I love you, Michael Collins. I love you, Michael Collins by Laura Logstead. That is correct. Question 36 goes to Binks Forrest. In what book do the main characters go camping at Mr. Harold's ranch? Lemons by Melissa Savage. That is correct. Question 37, Whispering Pines. In which book do the characters win a prize by ending up with the most cards? Yeah, Lights, Camera, Cook by um, Harper. That's correct. Question 38 goes to Binks Forrest. In which book does a character encourage other characters to share a wish, to share a wish with each other? Lights, Camera, Cook by Therese Miracle Harper. That is correct. Question 39, Whispering Pines. In which book is a character scared of heights after a gymnastics accident? Um, Overboard by Terry Lynn Johnson. That is correct. Question 40 goes to Binks Forrest. In which book do characters run as far and as fast as they could, just as if the devil himself were behind them, which in a way he was? Podkin One Ear by Kieran Larwood. That is correct. Question 41, Whispering Pines. In which book will you find two stuffed rabbits and a stuffed raccoon? Podkin One Ear by Kieran Larwood. That is incorrect. Question 42 goes to Binks Forrest. In which book does the main character discover her grandfather who hates her father. The Ark Plan by Laura Martin. That is correct. Question 43, Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book does a character find bugs in the linen closet? Dragons and Marshmallows by Asia Astro. That is incorrect. Question 44, Binks Forest Elementary. In which book does a character's sunflower thought grow into a worldwide news story? Um, 
The Sweetest Sound by Sherry Winston. That is incorrect. Question 45, Whispering Pines Elementary. In which book does a character think that he'd seen plenty of little girls playing with mice and rats and guinea pigs and even shudder tarantulas? I Love You, Michael Collins by Laura Logstead. That is incorrect. Question 46 goes to Binks Forrest. In which book does a girl dream daily of having a real unbroken family? Wish by Barbara O'Connor. That is correct. Question 47, Whispering Pines. In which book did a character add a special doorbell to the barn's back door? Into Marshmallows by Asia Astro. That is correct. Question 48. In which book does a character help a confused character how to find his home? A True Home by Callie George. That is correct. We do have a winner. Congratulations to both teams. You guys were incredible. We're going to tell you who won this competition right after this break. Since inception and rollout, it has been spot on. Gateway is really easy to access. I think it, again, it empowers the students. Welcome to SIS Gateway, your gateway to better communication with the schools and teachers that impact you. It's called SIS Gateway. The SIS stands for Student Information System. Some call it SIS, others call it SIS, but those who've tried it call it awesome. I think it's going to be a, a huge shift in the right direction. It shows your grades right away, so you see um, what you have in each class and uh, what assignments that you're missing. I do like the idea that we can be notified when our grades drop below a certain point because my grades are really important to me. And I think this appeals to all. You don't have to be that techie to get the information. It's readily available at your fingertips. Um, I do it from my home computer. Um, I have it automatically set up, so I just hit, click a button and it automatically opens. You can see every bit of information about your child. If you're if you're interested in their class ranking, it's there. If you're interested in whether or not they have met and satisfied certain graduation requirements, it's there. I know um, that her community service requirement has been met. I know that her online course requirement has been met. Um, I know that there are EOCs that have been met. Like That screen tells me all of that. The SIS Gateway, it helps me monitor my GPA. I feel like the SIS system has just shifted us totally to that aspect. With the email access, parents are e able to email that teacher instantly. We'll, we automatically have access to attendance. I like the fact that I'd be able to add the, my additional students on, my kids on, onto one screen, and I wouldn't have to go back and forth and remember different usernames and passwords for each one of them. I have it linked to my phone where I can get updates or alerts as needed. So it makes it convenient, um, it's an easy to follow program, and the icons and everything in it is, is nice and just straightforward. Seeing the future dates of the assignments help me plan out when assignments are going to be due so I can better plan out what my work schedule for doing the assignments are going to be. Because of the SIS Gateway, like my grades have increased. Last year I was an AB Honor Roll student, but now this year I am, so it really helps me. I would just say parents, this is what you've been praying for and asking for for years and it's here. Take advantage of it and use it to help support your kids. Welcome back to Battle of the Books. What an exciting competition in the elementary school division. This has just been so much fun. Once again, these students read 15 books. In some cases, they've read them two, three, four, five times, and I'm with Nolan Rawl from Library and Media Services, and Nolan, it's always so much fun to see these kids really getting into reading. It really is. I mean, the, the really great thing about this list of books is it covers lots of different genres, and it gets the kids to read books that maybe they might not have read otherwise, um, and kind of gets them out of their comfort zone reading. So. All right, to get to the finals, they competed online. So this is kind of the best of the best in Palm Beach County to begin with, correct? It really is. So um, at the elementary level, there was over 530 teams that competed to, to qualify for this spot. So these two teams were the, the best of the best. And just real quick, a shout out for all of those media specialists out there that do such a great job at their schools. Our media specialists are really amazing, and they, they really do a good job like getting the kids not just to do Battle of the Books, but a lot of other programs as well. All right, time now to announce the winners. First and second place in the elementary school division. Nolan, I'm going to let you handle this. 
All right, so second place this year in a very close competition was Whispering Pines. Whispering Pines Elementary School, congratulations. We are so proud of you. Jillian is the captain. Jillian, come on over here. First of all, I am so impressed with you. You said that you read the 15 books five times each. What is it about reading that you love so much? Well, I love imagining how they could take you into another world. They just, it's just, I, I just love reading and how I could just imagine all the things that are happening. You talked about that you love theater and you love reading. Have you, do you have any ideas what you want to do for a career when you get older? Art, acting, and hobby for reading. Triple threat. Jillian, thank you so much. Whispering Pines Elementary School, congratulations on a second place finish. You guys were wonderful. Nolan, come on over here. Let's grab the gold medals. And I guess that means that Binks Forest Elementary School is your champion in the elementary school division. Ryan, congratulations. What an accomplishment. Tell me about what it feels like to be the champion. Um, like it. It feels awesome because we work so hard. It took us three years to get here because we started in third grade, and it started out rough. Actually, we didn't get we didn't get far in third grade. Fourth grade, we won our school, and then now we're here and we won the whole county. So that's we're we all feel good. Oh, you guys should feel good. Congratulations to the team from Binks Forest Elementary. No one putting it uh, around Ryan's neck, and congratulations to all the participants. We're going to do some pictures with the Kavanaugh Cup. And Nolan, if you could maybe bring this over here, we'll, we'll hand it to the, to the team. And once again, it's been really special this year to honor Kim Kavanaugh, the longtime school district employee who passed away in April. And we, of course, are honoring him with the Kavanaugh Cup. Congratulations to Whispering Pines Elementary. You guys were sensational. Binks Forest is your elementary school champ. Thanks for watching Battle of the Books on the Education Network.